today back once again with another episode of Sigma Saturday. So, I've got miniatures in front of you. How exciting for you all. Um, I'm just going to do my pop-out chat and stuff. There's always a little bit of faffing about at the start of these videos. You should know that by now if you've joined me before. There's no one in the chat, so that is not bad. There's no one watching either, as I have only just scheduled this screen, so that's no screen. stream, so that's no great surprise. Um, right, let me see. I'll just get these two. Oh, no, I don't want that big. I won't be able to see the chat, will I? Oh, what's that? Right. Let me know if there's sound and stuff, guys. There should be, um, but... Obviously, there's no one watching at the minute, so you can't let me know. Just going to get my paints ready. Um, I've got the old uh, ball gun metal out again. And I am going to get some more uh, grey metallics down on these bad boys in front of you. Let's see what state my rushes are in. Oh, that's not bad. Look at that. Not bad at all. There we go. This is a army painter brush. Um, I actually really like these ones. You can't get it's not focusing, but yeah, it's an army painter brush. And uh, I am gonna hopefully, like I said, get some metallics down there. I'm not, I don't use wet palette for metallic for my metallics. Um, I think I discussed that last or the week before last rather. Last week I was uh, way down at Warhammer World actually for the eighth edition launch. I was only there briefly in the morning, um, but it was good. Um, Got a quick demo game in. I was hoping for a bit more of a of a um, game than uh, than what they actually gave us. Um, it was just my mate rolling the dice for the Ultramarine Primaris Marines. Um, Apologise if you can hear them dogs barking. They're next door and I think the owners are out. So they just keep barking for some reason. There must be someone knocking on the door constantly or something. Or maybe the neighbours on the other side are playing some loud music. I don't know. But yeah, it's quite annoying. If you can't hear them, then that's just ignore me. There's no, there's no dogs barking at all whatsoever. That's all I can hear. They've got a big dog and a little dog next door. Um, and yeah, yes. Ah, how you doing, Joshua Swan? Are you off out to work today at some point, or uh? Are you sticking around for the entire video? I don't know how long this video is going to be, by the way. Um, but, yeah, it'll just be as long, I think, as long as it takes me to get these Blood Reavers weapons painted up. Oh, it's coming along nicely. Look at that. See if we can get it to focus. You know what? Before the stream started, I was practicing getting this to focus. And it was working quite well. But now, of course, that I've started... Ah, there we go. Ah, it's, it's a bit bright, though, as well, isn't it? Um, yeah, now that I was... Um, now that I'm live, it's not focusing. Oh, no, that's bad news, Joshua. Uh, glandular fever. That's, uh, it takes its toll on you, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, they are uh, cool figures as well, yeah. They, uh... It'd be nice if I could uh, actually get them painted quickly, though. Not uh, not that they're particularly difficult to paint, it's just that I, uh... past few weeks I've not been sitting down painting as, as much as I had um, around about a month or so ago. <clears throat> ah, yeah, so... Um, yeah, last week I went down to my friend's house um or he's staying he's living at the minute with his in-laws um and he they live in castle donington um so just where download festival is so if i'd gone down the weekend before it would have been absolute hell to get there um oh pretty much bed bound that's bad news mate if you, uh, at least you're on the up now, so you'll be painting again soon. That's excellent. If, when when you get drained of like all energy and stuff, I I had it for one day a few weeks ago. I got home from work and uh, I just I felt absolutely drained of energy all of a sudden, and and it just came out of nowhere and hit me. 
and then um, I won't tell you everything that went on, but uh, yeah, I ended up I ended up going to bed quite early that night, and I just didn't have the energy to paint. So a few weeks ago, uh, I didn't manage to get a Sigma Saturday video up, and then I think I ended up doing a live one on the Sunday, I think, um, as a 30k slash Sigma Saturday video. Um, yeah, and it was it was awful, but I hate to have that for more than more than say a day or something like that. It'd be absolutely terrible. So I do feel for you. Um, yeah, so I was saying um, I went down to my our basic miniature paintings joined us. How you doing, mate? Saying get well soon to Joshua as well. Fantastic. Lovely spirits of the wargaming community. Um, yeah, so I went down to Castle Donington and had a game against a game of Age of Sigmar against my mate David on the Friday night. Um, and it was these corn blood band guys. Um, so my entire corn blood band force. Apart from I was gonna take this guy um he's a obviously he's a dwarden um but i was gonna take him as a uh scar blood wrath i think he's called he has two axes with like flails on um and i've painted this guy in like a corn color scheme to match my blood bound um he's not as big a model as a scar blood wrath model but you know the people i play against won't be too bothered about that um it's mainly really the weapons that you want you want to know what what you're facing weapon wise and that um but I, I feel like i should have played him because um it was it was pretty one-sided that battle i'd say i still had a good time good time playing it i'm really struggling with this uh bulk of metal at the minute my uh, brush keeps flaying as well um i think i need to get some brush soap on it you may just see that actually near my near my glass hair. Hey, there's a bottle of Tabasco as well. There's my brush soap. It's a pink one. I've seen people use dry brush soap, like powdered stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I wanted the powdered stuff, but I went into like an art supply shop in Manchester called Fred Elvis, um, and I picked that up. Um, they didn't have any powdered stuff, so I got that, and it seems to, you know, seems to be doing all right. Um, Josh was just asking in the chat, not tempted to do him as a white dwarf. I was, but um, I don't have an order force yet. Um, and it was part of the uh, when Wargamer Online. Um, oh god, I've dropped him. It's standard practice for me to drop a minute, at least one minute, to run a live stream. Yeah, so it was part of uh, when Wargamer Online. How you doing, Baza mate? Baza just joined us in the chat from Underdog Painting. Um, it was part of Wargamer Online. We're doing a. Um, Sigma showdown like it was like a mini conversion competition so I wanted to enter something for that and I'd had this uh, this sort of dwarf like with fire coming inside um, if I try and go closer see if we can get him to focus but no let's see if I can cover up my shirt and then he may focus no um, but yeah basically he's got like fire coming from within him, within him. he's got darker skin it was inspired oh, of course he focuses when the not even trying to make him focus. <laughs> um, yeah, he's got fire coming from within. It was inspired by a bit of artwork uh, when Age of Sigmar first launched. Um, I think it was like uh, the one of the Dwarven Gods, Grungi, uh, or Grungni, or whatever it's called. And he was fighting like a big uh, dragon, magma dragon, like a magma drop type thing um, in the realm of Akshi, I think. Um, so it was inspired by that, but I kind of took the spin that he's like, uh, this, this is a dwarf who's been abandoned by his... Um, Warden kin and he's uh, basically uh, been um, he's embraced corn because uh, corn turned to him and tempted him with uh, with uh, treats and, and aid and stuff like that so uh, he embraced corn and then he, he's sort of he takes up the role of like scar blood wrath in my force um, but yeah uh, that's just a little conversion I did for the Wargamer Online's Sigma Showdown competition uh, at the minute if you've not seen as well they are doing a uh, wargamer online wgo chronicles i think it's called i think that's the hashtag they're using wgo chronicles and if you if you anyone's getting a, a new um 40k force ready then um yeah uh use the hashtag on when you share pictures of it and stuff on social media use the hashtag wgo chronicles and um, you can be a part of like a, a community um, initiative to encourage each other to get your armies painted up and stuff. Um, I think I think there's a four week time period for it. Um, 
to try and get 50 power power level um, for sort of a thousand point force painted up in, in four weeks and just to try and you know encourage each other to, to get everything done I've um, started on my Primaris Marines from the start box I'm not sure I'll get them done in four weeks because you know these guys have taken months to get to this stage and not even finish it um, so yeah this print's really drying out and we're rushing it and it must be slightly too warm in here um, so yeah, um, I'm not sure I'll get them actually painted in time. I'm doing Imperial Fist Primaris Marines. Oh, on, on that note as well, um, let me just read the chat and I'll go back to what I was talking about. I'm going to move something to there so I remember to talk about it. There. Um, so Baz just said he's just bought some Vanguard Hunters and they are the worst kit to put together. He hates with a passion. <laughs> so uh, yeah, they. Um, I'm guessing they're similar to... Um, a lot of the stuff now where it's it's all 3D printed in a way that you have to get like the front of a leg and the back of a torso on the model like all like you have to twist and turn it to uh, to try and get them all sorted Joshua was saying uh, no way can he do 50 power level of guard in 4 weeks though <laughs> no it would be a struggle you'd have to do it all tanks I think wouldn't you you know to, to try and uh, try and get that I don't know what how many power power level a tank is uh, like a Lehman Russ or something but uh, yeah you'd have to do it all tanks and more expensive stuff or I tell you what you could do a, a, a Bane Blade or a Shadow Sword and then a, a, a squadron of Lehman Russes or something that might be around 50 power points we'll, we'll see um, yeah so what I wanted to talk about other than that was um, this uh, so this is a Primaris um, Space Marine that I got from GW for a painting competition um, a lot of GW stores are doing different things with these marines. Um, they're basically just going to replace, I think, the the small space marines that they used to give away for painting competitions and stuff, which is like this guy. Um, so yeah, it's like a single post dude. Um, I'm going to make a few changes to him. Um, although this is Sigma Saturday, I'm going to tell you about this now because obviously I'm, I'm painting some major Sigma miniatures anyway. So um, we'll go back to that shortly. Yeah, so um, I'm going to make a few changes to him. Uh, I'm going to try and find a holstered bolt pistol kind of thing or a pouch to put on there um, and I'm going to paint him up as a, one of the lieutenants and then if I add him to my Primaris Marine force that rounds my force off at 50, 50 uh, power level um, so yeah, if I paint him up as a lieutenant with the uh, bolt rifle or whatever it's called and the bolt pistol then that would be cool I don't want to convert him too much because um, I don't know the exact rules of the competition um, but I, you have to paint this marine so I'm guessing you have to keep him as close as possible so if I just add a pouch on either the left or the right hip um, and then he's got his bolt rifle then um, I think that's not too much of a conversion I've um, been speaking to Kiblams as well, Craig from Kiblams I'm going to see if he can uh, print me off a, a small symbol um, for this shoulder pad and or not print me off rather but um, He's got a silhouette cutting machine, um, and I'm going to see, or I've, I've asked him if he can uh, cut out a small symbol for this shoulder pad, and I'll glue it on with uh, with uh, polystyrene cement, whatever it's called. What did GW call it? GW call it plastic glue. Plastic glue thin. Yeah, so uh, I'll melt it round to the shoulder pad, and then uh, hopefully that'll enable me to get a nice, uh, unique chapter symbol on there. Um, I've got an idea. I'm not doing the Imperial Fist colour scheme for this guy, but it's going to be something quite uh, sympathetic to that colour scheme. So he'll, he'll fit in with my force, but he'll be of a different chapter kind of thing. Um, you can, I think there's a detachment where you can take single HQ models. Um, you just lose your power points and stuff like that, but um, it'll be a nice little uh, thematic addition to my force, I think. Um, I won't use him in every game, obviously. It's mainly just a to test my painting skill and um, yeah so the colour scheme I'm thinking I'll, I'll, I'll let you in on this little secret now um, I'm thinking like a mainly black um, and then mainly black and then a yellow shoulder pad something like that um, and obviously he's going to have his lieutenant helmet on top and stuff uh, so that will be I'll probably do it black with the uh, white line and the red thinner line in the centre um, yeah so that's uh, what I was thinking for this guy um, and uh, there'll be hopefully future updates on the I've got four weeks to paint this guy as well um, so I'm hoping Craig can uh, as I said get me that piece cut out 
if he can because it's a very obviously it's a very small area he's uh he's got to work with this uh, shoulder pad the the shoulder pads on the primaris marines if you don't know are the same size as the shoulder pads on the normal marines so it's not any bigger an area to uh, to work with so it's going to be interesting to see whether we can do it and while i've got you here looking at me um i'll just show you i've been building up my primaris marines as well so that's uh this is a uh, one of the lieutenants you get in the start set um see if we can get it to okay oh hey he focused that there magical ah it's gone now um yeah so this is this is a guy with it he's got a bolt pistol and a bolt rifle so that's uh basically i'm going to try and oh there we go he's focused magic oh he's unfocused he's focused uh, i'm going to try and uh get him to match not match this guy in pose or anything but represent the same sort of model as this guy Oh, and another thing I want to show you, which is a bit annoying <laughs> for uh, for like fluff connoisseurs. Um, the Primaris Marines and the Custodes are the same size, more or less. The Custode actually looks a lot bigger than this. I wonder if I've got him a bit closer to the camera. Yeah, but the same size, more or less. If you take away the pointy helmet of the Custode, uh, the shoulders and that are, are more or less the same height. Um, so that's a bit annoying for uh, for fluff connoisseurs like myself. Because uh, the Custodes are supposed to be bigger than Space Marines, and then the Primarchs are bigger than Custodes even. Um, yeah, so uh, an interesting little thing. I, I built that one up the other day just so I could do that size comparison. Um, right, let's go back to the chat, see what's going on. What type of stream is White Dwarf? Baz has joined us. Uh, Josh is saying hello. Uh, Vanguard Hunters. That's the entrance. No way can do it. Yeah, no way can do 50 power. It's in four weeks. Uh, that would cover it. Just spray it grey. To, uh, yes, that would be fantastic. Um, I've entered the competition, got it built before, before I capitulated. Still can't believe how, still can't believe how big they are. My screen's just gone off, which is annoying. Uh, I've got it back now. It's just a screen uh, screensaver coming off. The Custo Primaris thing actually infuriates me. Yeah, it is because they've only just released the Custos. And you would have thought they'd known they were releasing uh, Primaris Marines in the near future, so maybe they would have made the Custodes a little bit bigger. Um, you know, they, they look a bit... They look a little bit bulkier, but not much bulkier. Um, when you compare a... Interesting thing as well, when you compare a Custode to a Contempt of Dreadnought... Like not a Contempt of Dreadnought, sorry, a... Um, uh, what they call these guys? Uh, Cataphracted Terminator. Uh, they're a similar height as well. Now... It is mainly the the no actually when you compare them the shoulders are about the same height, but obviously the shoulders on the cataphractic go above his head, so that's that's what the size difference should be like between a a primaris marine and a uh, contemptor. But obviously these primaris marines they're supposed to be um, they're supposed to be uh, bigger than a space marine, so it's like what what everyone's expecting. Um, I think is that the Primaris Marines will eventually just replace the current range of Space Marines. Um, but whether that'll actually be the case is, is, a, is you know, up for debate. Um, so I guess the GWR, they, they have kind of covered themselves to a certain extent. Um, how are you doing, Clay Dog? Good you could join us from the other side of the world. Um, so, yeah, it's good... Um, yeah, GW have sort of got themselves covered um, with the whole Primaris uh, Custodes thing. Just out of interest, I'm going to compare uh, a Primaris to a Corn Blood Warrior. So, compare them in size. The Primaris is slightly bigger, but um, I know a lot of people have already used these, and I was thinking of doing it if I was ever going to do a Chaos Force, use these guys as Corn Berserkers. Uh, just add bolters to them and stuff like that. You know, maybe replace this arm with an arm with a bolt pistol or uh, an extra axe or something like that. Um, so it'd be, you know, it definitely uh, within the realms of possibility if you didn't want to wait for any new Corn Berserker models to convert these up, and then you've got the you know the match up in size with the with the new Nurgle models, new Death Guard models, and obviously the match up in size with the Primaris. So yeah, it's a it's an interesting little uh, comparison. You can make that. It's always interesting comparing. I I love size comparison videos. And um, whenever someone does like a, here's a here's a warlord next to a grot, a warlord titan next to a grot. Here's a warlord titan next to a gorkonaut next to a, uh, dread knight next to whatever. I love them sort of videos. Um, 
Yeah, so um, the the really uh, really interesting. I'm going to try and get back on track now with what I was talking about before uh, before I got into the whole Prime Morris Marine chat. Um, so yeah, my, I had a game against my friend David, um, and he played his elves, um, the ones you get in the Spyro Dawn box basically, um, and they were really really good compared to my Corn Bloodbound, which is kind of frustrating. <laughs> Because obviously they've got, um, I think that there's a couple of units in there with ranged attacks, um, so missile attacks or whatever you call them. Um, so they were doing damage from a distance, but then when they charged in, like you, you get um, these, I don't know what they're called, uh, but they're like knights, basically, mounted knights on uh, on horseback, mounted on horseback, obviously. Um, when they charge in, they did a, a lot of damage. Um, you've got, you know what, I should have done my research for this. Um, I should have actually found out what the units were called before starting this video. Um, there's like blade somethings. <laughs> yeah, this is this is going to be a really vague vague discussion. But basically, yeah, the 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 force you uh, elves you get in the Spyro Dawn box, they they seem a lot more uh, competitive, shall we say? I'm not sure how they stack up points wise in like the general's handbook. But they seem a lot more brutal than the corn bloodbound you get. It'd be interesting to for the elves in that set to take on the stormcasts you get in uh, in the Age of Sigma start set with Vandus Hammerhand and uh, whoever else. Ionus Cryptspawn is it? Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how how they compare against them. So I'm tempted to get them built up and paint. Well, not painted, but built up at least and uh, take them down next time I'm going down. I'm going down again next month uh, to see him. So uh, hopefully we'll get another Age of Sigmar bat ripping and fingers crossed on a, uh, a 40k bat ripping. Um, I did, I managed to get a game of 8th edition 40k in uh, last Saturday evening against uh, Craig down in Derby as well. Craig from Kiblams who I mentioned earlier. Um, and I have to say, um, I'm not going to do any spoilers because I, I want to talk about it in my 30k video tomorrow probably. But I have to say I really, really enjoyed it. How how simple it is and how how much quicker it is than the previous edition. Um, yeah, so it was uh, really enjoyable. Um, the last game I played was against... Last game of 40k I played, um, of 7th edition, was against my friend David. Um, and... Whenever we played, we were always checking the rules all the time and stuff like that because we didn't play that frequently. So a lot of the a lot of the universal special rules and stuff kind of went out of our heads. But the good thing is, in the new edition, um, is that um, you you've got all the rules to hand on your unit profiles. So any rules that apply to them or that apply to them because they're within say six inches of an HQ unit. They they are then um, you know they're they're readily available. You're not flicking through books. The only the only downside is that, and this will probably be addressed when um, or maybe not actually probably not thinking about it. But this may be addressed when codexes are eventually released for each faction. Um, the weapons at the back of the book they're a bit hard to find because there's so many factions in each index. Um, so it's a bit hard to find your right one. Um, but then I guess all you have to do is put a bookmark in and then you just flick back and forth to that page. But yeah, overall, really, really enjoyable game. Um, and uh, yeah, look out for my uh, 30k video tomorrow to to find out my thoughts and um, sort of how the game went. I, I did, I recorded a uh, trucking with the Big Mac video the other day, um, but then it kind of just went on and on and on and I didn't really talk specifically about much um, so what I'm going to try and do is a 30k video tomorrow with my first impressions of the game and um, first impressions of the game and maybe a few pictures uh, so you know what I'm talking about as well is anybody else uh, painting at the minute or are we all uh, just watching me fail to fail to even get one minute of painting I was going to go for a run this morning, but um, I felt really lazy. I was supposed to go for one yesterday, actually, but yeah, I felt really... I, I, I'm in a stage at the minute where I'm, I'm just not doing stuff. Um, 
I've got a few things to do and I'm not, you know, it's kind of, I'm like a, a deer in the headlights or a rabbit in the headlights. Um, and I am just sort of frozen uh, between tasks, which is a bit frustrating. Oh, come on, get in there. Uh, Clay Dog's painting his Death Guard. That's excellent. I've seen uh, seen some of your minis on Facebook and they're looking fantastic, mate, I have to say. Baz is normally uh normally rushing out to work at some point when I uh when I start streaming this video, so it'll be interesting to see if he pops off again. I think last time I did a live stream on a Saturday he was uh he was in the car park watching on his phone. Um, and then he had to shoot off to work. I think that guy is about metal enough. So I've got one done. Uh, there we go. How are you finding the Death Guard Clay Dog? Are they, uh, are they a pleasure to paint? Like they look like they look like they could be really simple to paint if you just did, uh, you know, using using shades and stuff like that. Um, they look like they could be a really quick paint job, but also um, you can you can really take your time on them as well and pick out every little detail. Like there's things like um, a guy when I went to Warhammer World last week, a guy pointed out to me, and I've since seen it on social media. There's a there's a like a maggot in uh, one of the vents of uh, someone's backpack and stuff like that. That you know if you take your time painting that and then you seal it up, it's like you can't even see it. You know there's there's a hole at the top of the thing, but you can't you can't get enough light down there to see that maggot in there. But it's cool little details like that that make you sort of uh, appreciate the work that goes into uh, sculpting these GW models, I think. I, uh, I split my starter box with uh, Kim from Norway. Um, it is Dice Minute Paint Guy on YouTube. Um, so I sent my Death Guard over to him uh, because I just uh, have no interest in Death Guard really or Nurgle. Um, however, when I opened the box and had a look at the miniatures, I was like, you know what? I would like to paint these, um, but then it's uh, you know, he's he's obviously paid me for half of the cost of the kit, so uh, it's not like I'm losing out because they just sit there for for years with me, <laughs> unpainted, unbuilt, and unpainted probably. It would be nice just to have the starter kit though, uh, with with both halves, so you can just play the scenarios in the books and stuff. You know what? I've not even looked at the uh, the main rulebook for forty k really. Um, I've looked at what have I looked at? Uh, yeah, I've just looked at the core rules uh, for playing playing the game against Craig last week. I just rushed through reading it in the garden. Uh, we had some nice weather last weekend in the UK, um, and it was very warm. We're out in the garden with a paddling pool out and stuff. Um, and I was sat under a tree reading uh, reading the new rules and the new, new core rules whilst they're uh, also playing with my mate's kid um, so that was all very good and there was there was so many spiders on that lawn um, I think it's all the trees they've got in the garden it encourages spiders but they you know spiders in the UK are no problem really they just crawl on you and you're like oh there's a spider um, some people don't like them but uh, that's more of a like irrational phobia than, than anything else um, yeah so clay dogs loving the death guard and uh, He's a fool to paint every detail. Yeah, there's uh, you know there's people out there that paint the inside of tanks, and there's people out there that don't paint the inside of tanks, and it's uh, it's always interesting to see which kind of person each person is. Um, for me, I, I think I like all the details put there for a reason. So, especially if you can open a door on the tank, I like the idea of painting the inside of like a, a control panel inside a tank or something like that. Uh, like on my Forge World Night, which I need to get back to at some stage. Um, I'm painting all the interior details and I'm going to leave it so the, the door can be opened and closed. Yeah, spiders in uh, in Australia kill you. Um, so that was kind of what I was getting at with the whole uh, spiders over here and no problem. <laughs> Interestingly, um, people have probably heard this before, but uh, one of the most venomous animals or insects in the, uh, in the UK is the daddy long legs which doesn't have any teeth that can actually penetrate human skin. Um, so yeah, it's one of the most dangerous but harmless insects at the same time. Um, I don't know what he uses the venom for. I imagine it can pierce uh, other insects' skin and stuff like that, so it can eat them. Um, 
squat, I don't know. I've never never seen a daddy long legs eating anything, but if you don't know what a daddy long legs is, it's like a it looks like a flying spider apart from the fact that it's only only got six legs. Um so it is an insect, um, but it's got really long legs. Um and they they've got quite long thin wings as well and they, they could they look when the when you see them flying like they can barely control the way they're flying because uh, they're just not designed for for flight really similar to a bumblebee like a bumblebee um if you ask an aerodynamist is that is that a real term you ask an aerodynamist uh about a bumblebee it shouldn't be able to fly but it can um so a bumblebee is like a, a big round bee um, with small wings um but yeah they, they shouldn't be able to fly um according to scientists but they can um but i think it's because of because of the way they use the wings and the way the wings work and because they've got obviously bees have got uh, i think two sets of wings um so because of the way the the wings move around each other and interact with each other that's how it creates the extra lift for it to be able to fly <laughs> Joshua Swan says he's never leaving his safe that's why he's never leaving his safe space after uh, the spiders over there kill you comment uh, his cousins that's it. yeah uh, he's, he's not a fan of the insects the insect population of Australia so there we go yeah daddy long legs are the doziest things that have ever existed they're, they're so stupid them and moths I find like moths just a lot of the time they look like they can't control the way they fly and it's really irritating I had one flying around me last night while I was sat here watching a Wargamer online stream and it just started flying around me I said what are you doing mate just just go away it flew like across um, I think what I think I, I can't remember exactly what I was doing but oh I was just uh, clipping off some sprue and stuff of my uh, Primaris Marines and it was just irritating me. It's like, what are you doing? I'm not going to kill you because that's a bit harsh, but just go away. What's up with you? There's something seriously wrong with a lot of insects, I think. Like, they've got mental issues. <laughs> I think it's more they've just not got the mental capacity to know any different rather than actually having mental issues. They've not got the, uh, the brain capacity. So they've got basic basic programming within their minds that obviously tell them to feed uh, to uh, to eat well feed and eat yeah same thing Daniel well done maybe I've not got the mental capacity to make comment on it um, but yeah they've uh, feed and reproduce basically that's uh, that's all they have a uh, capacity for I think oh I'm getting bored of painting these, you know. <laughs> I may end this what end this one. And uh, just reading Joshua Swan's name in the chat again. I may end this stream a lot sooner than I intended. Um this uh maybe I should use a wet palette for this metallics. Um I know for some reason I've never used a wet palette for metallics, but I, to to be to be fair I've only started using a wet palette in recent uh months. But yeah, I've, I've uh, stayed clear of using a wet palette for my metallics. I'm not sure why though, I can't remember why. I think there was a reason. I think it's because I didn't want the metallics mixing with any other colours in the palette by accident. Feed, reproduce and annoy humans. Yes, they are the basic functions of insects. Getting a bit more paint on this brush and I'll get it done quicker. That's the general rule, isn't it? Oh, I've got a message from somebody. Who I've been chatting about. Let's have a look. Oh, I've got loads of messages. Let's have a look. Wow, that's amazing. I can't show you what it is because it's a big, big secret, a super secret. I'm just try to, I'm trying to work out my. Uh, the size of some the thing that um, Craig's cut out for me, um, but he's got bigger fingers than mine, so I'm not sure if that's going to be a, a bit big. But I think it could work. You know, that's amazing, absolutely amazing. You will you will see this all in good time uh, once I've revealed my big my big scheme for uh, for the Primaris Marine I'm painting for the competition. 
Let me just close this pot because I'm going to message him back. Right. Or maybe I should just show you. Show you on the phone. Maybe I should. Should I show you? Do you want me to show you? Or should I keep it as a big reveal for, for myself? That is absolute. I am blown away by that. Genuinely blown away. That is crazy. <laughs> this must be so annoying for you. Uh, yeah, if, if you really want me to show you. Yeah, oh, Joshua says show you. So this is what I've asked Craig to cut out for me. Um, just for a one-off colour scheme for a single marine. Um, so, oh, the light's on it. There we go. So that's what I've asked Craig to cut out for me. And that's on the tip of his finger. So that is absolutely tiny. That is, you know, the... The uh, the legs of it, for example, obviously you can you can probably see that it's a it's a bee, it's a the Manchester worker bee. Um, recent events in Manchester have led to like a um, a spate of people a spate a uh, a rise in uh, knowledge of the Manchester worker bee and stuff like that. And obviously being from Manchester, um, I wanted to do something um, to show a uh, like a, a little a little tribute if you like um but also gi it gives me the basis of a of a color scheme um to to um you know a bee's a bee's color scheme is uh obviously black and yellow a bee's color scheme a bee's color a bee's coloring is black and yellow so it gives me the basis of a color scheme uh, so the manchester worker bee is the, the bees associated with manchester uh, for various reasons, and you know what, I don't know why it's a bee, um, but I think it's because Manchester's like it. historically, it's um, it became a, a an industrial powerhouse during the Industrial Revolution, basically. Um, so the the population became known as like the worker bees uh, kind of thing. So that's why the worker bees associated with Manchester. Um, and after uh, the terror attack at the Ariana Grande concert uh, the other month, it was. Um, a lot of people went out and got tattoos of the worker bee um, and paid fifty pound for to to various you know tattooists all across Manchester and I think some came into Manchester as well. Um, we're doing tattoos of and you can see on on uh, my desk there as well. I've been been drawing it to to practice see how small I can draw it, basically. Um, so yeah, people were getting tattoos of the the worker bee to you know to show a bit of uh, civic pride. Um, but also uh, for for charity to raise raise money for the families affected by um, by the terrorist attack at the Ari Ari uh, Ariana Grande concert um, the other month, and um, I wanted to do a Space Marine chapter, um, or not a chapter necessarily, but um, a Space Marine, a single Space Marine miniature um, painted with a Manchester worker bee on the shoulder. Um, but what? Craig's done for me there will enable me to get that nice and neat and perfect rather than these uh, these drawings which are all a bit inconsistent. Um, so if I did want to do it over the, a whole chapter, uh, then it'd be uh, it'd be possible, uh, more realistic, more realistic thing to do. Um, I, oh, it's all smudged now this, uh, but I drew one on a shoulder pad of, a, of an old test marine, um, but it's really it's really all smudged. It looks more like a ladybird there than a than a worker bee. Um, but yeah, I drew one on just to see if I could draw one on and see how easy it would be. Um, how easy it would be. <laughs> there we go. No, lovely lovely little pump for you in the middle. Um, so you know your hobby is getting in your head when everything has a colour scheme. Yes, so bees have colour schemes now. Uh, some of them are more orange and black. Um, I'm just going to message Craig back, so bear with me a second, guys. millimeters tall is that small enough um i'm gonna i'm gonna pause the stream a second guys i'm gonna put a picture up for you so you can uh so you can have a look i'm just gonna go and find a tape measure
Whoa. As you can probably hear, guys, I am now back. Let's go back to this scene. So I've got a tape measure in front of me. You get to see me measure. Instead of a uh, painting, you get to see me measure a Space Marine shoulder pad. Let's get this one because it's going to be the one I'm using. It's going to be very tight, that. Ooh. I don't think that'll work. It's very close, so. One thing I will do though, oh, I'll definitely fit on there. Just uh, try to work out whether that would fit on. The size, the size he's uh, said it is, is uh, uh, nine millimeters. I was just trying to work out whether it would fit on a shoulder pad, but it definitely fit on that banner there. But that banner's not going to be, um, not going to be part of the uh, painting competition. But I can draw one on the shoulder pad if if you can't go any smaller. Um, that is amazing though. Pardon me, sorry if you heard that guys. Um, interesting Sigmar Saturday, definitely. <laughs> just throwing up pictures of orcs. And they're running around. Um, just bear with me a sec guys, I shall be back. Well I say I shall be back, I'm here all the time. Um, just try to think out what, figure out what I can say to Craig here. Just play the Legion of Gamza intro for you over and over again, but that'd get a bit annoying, wouldn't it? Right, let's get back to Sigma Saturday. Let's go back to the chat. Uh, you know who's getting full skin. Um, Baz is saying big match fancy setting up something for the Manchester bombing. Um, what do you mean, like a, a charity giveaway or something like that? I mean, I'm not, um, I'm not an organizer myself, um, so it's not uh, not something I might, uh, not something I'd want to organize myself. I, I'd struggle organizing a day out. Um, so um, I'm not the best person to set something up if you meant like a like paint a paint up a you know a small marine force or something and then um, <clears throat> and then raffle it or something like that then yeah I'd, I'm not an organizer myself so it's not something I'd consider doing really um, depends on what you mean though I guess um, Brit Marine Army's started as a single Brit Space Marine for a Tour de France event at my local GW then it became a whole lot ah that's uh, good to know the origins of your army um, sorry I'm just reading reading the chat and reading messages from Craig that are popping up on the bottom of my screen at the same time yeah from little acorns do mighty oaks grow um, interesting Sigma Saturday could do a group build for it or is that an ancient concept I was thinking paint up a squad of marines or a guy and eBay them off. Uh, I guess that wouldn't take too much organising, yeah. Um, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Like, uh, I'd have to uh, I'd have to look into it. What what we'll do? Um, you can hear I'm getting messages galore on uh, Facebook now. Um, I shall nip back to that in a second. Um, but yeah, what we'll do is we'll um, 
we'll leave it there or keep keep shooting ideas into the chat if you want but um maybe we'll have a chat on facebook see if uh see if it's something uh we could put together um it could be could be a could be an interesting little thing definitely um if we can get especially if we can get craig involved with his magical silhouette cutting skills joshua said he'll join in as well um right so we could have something we could have the start of something here um it'd be very interesting to see um right let me just go back to craig because he's uh winging messages my way and then i'll be back with you guys and i'll get some major sigma stuff done this is a really rubbish stream <laughs> right let's have a look might be able to go oh we might be able to go small so it's possible to measure uh so it's possible to measure it on the curve uh you can see how the early attempts failed. Um, ooh, have... ooh, that's a good idea. Um, right, I'm going to put the super orc guy up again for you. That's actually, uh, if you didn't know, um, this orc picture that I'm putting up now, that's actually Big Mac Dan School that um, Tattoo For You, uh, Richard, uh, from the Nerd Life channel, uh, that he he uh, drew this for me and got it painted up for me. So, um, you know, go and check out his channel. Uh, check him out on Facebook as well. Um, the Nerd Life. I think it's the Nerd Life. It might not be there, um, but on on his YouTube channel now is the Nerd Life. Um, so check out his channel if you're interested in um, getting in touch with him to have any uh, commission work done yourself. Definitely, uh, definitely, I would recommend using him. He's an awesome artist. He used to be a tattoo artist. That's why his uh, name used to be Tattoo for You. Yeah, so he's back. You get to see how awkward it is for me to get into my chair. Oh, actually, I've managed to do it really quickly. There was a lot of banging about, though, of course. Normally, I'm having to jump over the arm of the chair to get into the chair because um, where my computer's positioned, it's really awkward. It's like squished away in a corner. I've got a door right behind me here, like there. Um, and yeah, it's uh, just like a little alcove in my house that would be a waste of space if I didn't use it for the computer. Where have I put my tape measure? Down there. Let's have a look. So, the size of the decal is nine millimeters. Uh, not the, well, the, the size of the B that Craig's done is nine millimeters. And the size of these decals which I believe are shoulder pad markings is, let's see, it's a bit hard to tell with this uh, tape measure, I have to say. Let's see, top to bottom. It's like six. It's about six, that. Got a really itchy eye all of a sudden. Let's see the ultramarine ones. The lengths we go to for our hobby. Six. Okay, so they're all about six. I'm just gonna shove that on the floor then and probably stand on it afterwards. To be fair, I don't need any of the uh don't think I need any of the markings on that, apart from the tactical the squad markings and stuff actually. Right. So back to message messaging Craig. Oh wow, we've got a few more people in the chat. Frost and Fist, Mythos has joined us in the chat, fantastic. And we've also got FX Odious. Hey, what's he doing? I just joined. Um, FX Odious, I was just measuring the decals of um, the, although this is a Sigma Saturday video, I've become distracted by, uh, by a little project, side project I'm working on. And I was measuring the decals on the uh, Space Marines decal sheet that you get with the Primaris in the 40k starter set. Um, uh, because I've got a little side project I'm going to be working on for well uh, it's a painting competition for one of my local gw stores uh i got this marine free and i wanted to paint him up in colors with like the manchester worker bee on and um, if you don't know what that is just type manchester worker bee into google and um kiblams uh craig from kiblams is uh he's trying to get one cut out for me um in the right size for a shoulder pad um so i'm going to message him now and let him know the measurements of the decals
So just talk amongst yourselves in the chat for the time being. <laughs> Double dada. Oh, and by the way, Mythos, I saw your, uh, well, I didn't read your message, but I saw you'd sent me a message on uh, Facebook, responded to my message. So uh, I'll have I'll have to uh, read that afterwards because if it is the wall of text like I've just seen it says, um, it's probably going to take me a while to read through it. Well, I've been working on the Death Watch recently in the pattern of Watch Fortress tells up. Talasa Prime. Which one's Talasa Prime? Is that the one with Artemis as the uh, watch captain? Or is... Uh, my Death Watch... I, I read the Death Watch Codex when I first got it. Um, but then, since then, I've not... Um, I've not gone back to it. Uh, you know, I was doing a Death Watch pro project in November, I think. Um, and I was really enjoying it. But then, I kind of uh, lost all my momentum. And uh, currently planning out the banner to paint. Excellent. Yeah, I kind of lost all my momentum on the Death Watch about two weeks into it, which was really frustrating. Um, but I'll go back to that at some point because um, the way I'm going to paint this marine up, the, yeah, this uh, marine for uh, my store's competition. Uh, my store's actually, the I say my store, it's a store I most frequently go to currently. Uh, it's in Stockport, which is in like Greater Manchester or Cheshire, depending on who you ask. Um, and which is in the northwest of England, basically. Um, the the store I most frequently go to. Uh, I'm going to paint this guy up with black armor, um, and then yellow shoulder pads, and then he'll have the Manchester B. Which uh, these these things on here, they kind of look similar to the Manchester B, but not as good. Uh, this big one is probably the best one. Uh, you know that that big one there. Um, I painted that one, and then these are done with sharpie and a gel pen. Um, but I was just messing about, just seeing how small I could get them onto a, you know, see if I could fit them onto a Space Marine shoulder pad, basically. Um, but yeah, the colour scheme for that Marine is going to be mainly black. Um, I'm going to paint in the same way I paint my Death Watch with edge highlighting of like grey blues. Um, and then yellow shoulder pads with a Manchester B, hopefully, on one of the shoulder pads. Um, and then I was thinking if I wanted to use this in the future, I could uh, basically take that arm off. <laughs> Uh, replace that with a Death Watch shoulder pad or arm even um, and then put a Manchester B on the other shoulder pad um, if Craig manages to get some cut out for me to the to the right size the decals uh, on the shoulder pad are around about six millimeters and um, so it's gonna be really tough for him to cut it to that size I think uh, but it's really you know I really appreciate him trying he's just doing it as a favor and um, so it's fantastic yeah, the one in the planet in the same solar system as McCrag. Ah, cool. That's Talasa Prime. Oh, Craig sent a photo. Let me have a look. It's not come through on my phone yet for some reason. I'll close that chat head. I'll go back to that shortly. Because I want to get some painting done. <laughs> I should just tell him I'm doing a live stream, man. What are you doing to me? You're making it really exciting for all the people because I'm uh, <laughs> cause I'm jumping from thing to thing and then I'm not talking to them. Ah, okay. I'm just going to go back to that. And then I shall be. Why is it not coming through on my phone? That's really annoying. I'm just seeing Craig's messages pop up on my PC screen. Um, but they're not coming through on my phone for some reason. So what I'm going to do is go into Facebook on here. Whoa. Hmm, it gives you the basic outline now. It's very interesting. Very, very interesting. Hmm. 
It'd be better than me drawing it. That's for sure. I'll tell you what, guys. I'm going to do some dodgy screen sharing. There you go. You can see what I'm looking at. I probably shouldn't show you this because uh, there could be some dodgy messages on it. Yeah, but I like, oh no, I don't want to exit that. Cancel that. Let's minimize that. Um, um, let me see if I can do this, do that there. I want to see that. That's what I want to see. Right, there we go. I just want to make sure that's uh, the right thing. Can I zoom in on that? I want, basically, I wanted to show you the, the size. So this is a 7mm one, uh, which is it's, it kind of loses the detail. It's hard for you to see, I understand, but kind of loses the detail. That's the 9mm one, I think, which looks amazing, that one. Um, it's crazy. And there's a, obviously a paintbrush to show you how small he's cut them. Um, but yes, let's go back to my models. So you're not seeing private messages between any me and any naughty people. <laughs> or not so naughty people, of course. Oh, what have I done here? Right, I'll have to go back to that afterwards. <clears throat> Got six viewers, that's amazing. And I'm not even talking to them or entertaining them. I'll go back to Craig once I've done this stream. How long have I been going for now? Where does it tell me how long I've been going for? I've completely lost all sense of everything. Where does it tell me? That's weird. Let me go back to this YouTube dashboard. It'll probably tell me on there, won't it? So I've been going now for... Well, I've been going for nearly an hour. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it soon, guys. I'll get this guy's... Uh, axe painted then I'll cut it and I'll have had a grand total of two miniatures weapons painted up in an hour and this is why I am such a slow painter um, because I just uh, I get distracted easily when I do these live streams when, when I first started doing them it was a real help to me um, but it seems in the last couple I've really struggled with it um, because I've been too uh, interacting too much with the chat or uh, you know getting distracted by other things that are going on um, but yeah it's uh, kind of frustrating because I, I it, they really did help me at first are you kidding your naughty messages are just a different kind of entertaining <laughs> thank you Mythos sometimes I put naughty messages in my um in the start of my videos as well like little uh, clips from the bathtub and stuff like that you know just to keep everybody out there excited and entertained is it I think I ask this on every stream I do but is it annoying when I rinse my uh, brush because it's uh it's not far away from my mic so I guess it could be quite annoying Does anybody uh, thin their metallic paints like with Lamy and Medium or does everybody just use them straight from the pot? That's an interesting question to ask. Get a bit of chat going there. I know um, you're not supposed to thin your metallics with water uh, because it separates the pigment out. So if you use Lamy and Medium which is basically uh, it's the, it's the paint solution without any pigment in, uh, then it keeps the consistency, if you like, of uh, of paint. Uh, Joshua Swan noticed that bathtub trick uh, clip. I was trying to break the internet again by getting millions and millions of views. Millions and millions of views. I've not watched any wrestling for ages, you know. I was well into my wrestling when uh, when I was getting back into 
40k I was also getting back into wrestling and then I've been watching it for a few years and since the since the brand split between Raw and Smackdown um, if you don't know the WWE has two main shows Monday Night Raw and um, Smackdown Live which is on on Tuesdays um, and they've uh, split the entire WWE roster between two the two shows and um, so half of the roster is on Raw and half the roster is on Smackdown and uh, since the brand split occurred again, they did it. They did it years ago, like around the two thousands, um, and uh, that's kind of when I first start, first stopped watching it. Rather, um, I think the brand split just doesn't do any favors for me. It makes makes it harder to follow and stuff. Um, I have both one one thin and one thinned with one. Ah, that's cool. So FX Odious has one. I'm guessing it's one thinned. Uh, like metallic and one unthinned metallic, uh, but he has it with water. I Means I was saying the bathtub scene and shout out was hilarious. Joshua Swan, uh, he does it from the pot because he's lazy, like me, like me. Um, I do have a a wet palette, but I don't use my metallics on it. I mentioned that earlier. I know I'm just repeating myself now. When you start repeating yourself, you know. Uh, your stream's kind of going off the rails. I prefer thin with water, uh, but put multiple thin layers on to give it a smooth texture. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, most people do that for, for the regular paints, for the non-metallics. Um, but some people are always... This, you know, they swear, you know, you, you should never thin your metallic with water. So it's, so it's interesting to hear someone's having a success out there with uh, thinning it with water. Right, I'm going to call it a day there, guys. Apologies that it's not been the most sigma orientated of Saturdays, but at least you got, at least you got a, uh, you know, a small uh, inkling of uh, a sigma Saturday. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'll call it a day there. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with a Warhammer 40k video showing my thoughts on, um, showing my thoughts on actual. 40, 40k stuff rather than uh, I, you know I'm not going to be talking about Age of Sigma stuff tomorrow um, so I'll call it a day there um, and I'll see you on the battlefield <laughs>